a KQED HD production. race for space. Amateur rocketeers are punching holes in the sky as they launch homemade rockets into the atmosphere. Today's civilian rocket builders are pushing the envelope of what can be accomplished in model rocketry. From the simplest kits you can buy at your local hobby shop to 30-foot-long, 1,000-pound, fully loaded homemade rockets that can go supersonic and reach the edge of space, rocketeers are advancing our understanding of science, engineering, and technology, all while having a total blast. An engineer and venture capitalist who serves on the boards of companies like Tesla Motors and SpaceX, Steve Jurvetson is one of Silicon Valley's most successful business leaders. He's also one of the thousands of amateur rocket builders who are completely hooked. By day, I'm a venture capitalist investing in startup companies that are trying to change the world. But what I really love on weekends is launching rockets. Bye-bye, rocket. I hope you fly well. Half a century ago, at the beginning of the space race, model rocketry took off as kids dreamed of going to the moon. Apollo was inspirational for people. Like, wow, look what we can do if you apply yourself in engineering. And it's interesting that the first model rocketry efforts came out around that time. And there have since been 500 million hobby rocket launches in America. 500 million. One of the main draws of the hobby is that kids of all ages can start small and work their way up. So this would be a typical example of an Estes rocket. And the whole thing's very, very light and takes a small motor and goes up maybe 200 feet. The rocket motors come in a variety of sizes. Each increases, in this case, a doubling of power. So this is about the size of the biggest Estes rocket motor you can get. It's called an E motor. G motor, bigger still. Now this is the biggest motor you can buy over the internet, no matter who you are. To advance to larger rockets and bigger motors, rocket builders need to get certified for clearance by a sanctioned rocket club. Then you get into high power rocketry. This is about the largest motor you can buy and fly in California. But you can go farther. In Nevada, oh, this would be an N motor, Nancy in size. So it's huge, right? I don't know if I can get it off. I put it maybe in, off into the distance. There, there it is. Flew this a few times in the desert this summer. It is spectacular. With advancements in materials and technology, today's civilian rocket builders can reach levels of altitude and sophistication that only a NASA scientist could have imagined a generation ago. New bleeding edge designs contain complex flight computers, GPS telemetry, high definition cameras, and more. But no amount of technology and rocketry has broken Murphy's Law. What can go wrong will. In rocketry, as in entrepreneurship, if you haven't littered the playing field with some failures, somebody's not pushing the envelope. It's not realistic to assume you won't fail. What I've failed most often is um, not deploying my parachute. And so you lose everything. The whole rocket just drills into the ground. For obvious safety reasons, you can't just go to your neighborhood park and fire off a high-powered rocket. Rocket clubs like Lunar, based in Livermore, California, organize sanctioned events in expansive places like Moffett Field in Sunnyvale or here at a fallowed farm in California's Central Valley. About 15 years ago, I saw a sign hanging in a hobby shop in Fresno and it said uh, they were having high power rocket launches. As soon as I drove up, some big giant rocket was taken off and my first thought was that can't possibly be legal. Then I got involved in it. It's, it's just a lot of fun. 
the technology's come a long way. Actually, you know, these, these bigger motors now use uh, propellant called ammonium perchlorate, which is the same solid propellant that they use in the space shuttle booster. So you can, uh, you can go a lot higher on a, on a relatively small motor. This is a high power rocket motor. This is an M1315. This will take a rocket like this, which weighs 50 pounds, and probably put it up about 6,000 feet. Hopefully it all comes back in one piece. It's two or three hundred dollars for a case, so you want to get that back. And we're just going to stand this up now here, and we're going to put the parachute in, put both chutes in, put the nose cone on, and we'll be ready to go in five, five to ten minutes. The size M motor is the limit of what can be flown in California. To get bigger, you have to go to the middle of nowhere. Black Rock Desert, Nevada. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Black Rock Desert. I'm here to conduct the safety briefing. My name is Wedge Oldham. I'll be serving as the flight director on this operation. We want all the people that showed up with all the limbs and fingers that they came with to go home with those same amount of limbs and fingers. The supersonic rockets fired here need special FAA and military clearances. The sky needs to be open when you put a vehicle through the stratosphere. To encourage civilian space exploration, video game developer John Carmack created the 100,000-foot altitude challenge. A $10,000 prize goes to the first team to launch a rocket 100,000 feet high and retrieve it intact. Yeah. One team led by record-breaking rocket builder Derek DeVille was able to develop and build a contender in a matter of months. Their 14-foot rocket named Quake uses a Q-class motor carrying nearly 150 pounds of solid rocket propellant. On its maiden flight in September 2011, it hit a top speed of 2,200 miles per hour. That's three times the speed of sound and reached an estimated altitude of 121,000 feet, nearly 23 miles high. Also launching from the playa is the next generation of hotshot rocket scientists. A team of eight high school students arrives with one goal in mind. Through an accelerated education program, they've designed, built, and are ready to launch a 30-foot rocket carrying a real-world scientific payload. The concept of civilian exploration and the role that rocketry plays in that represents a huge opportunity. We basically tested the ignition system. Thomas Atchison heads Rocket Mavericks, a nonprofit educational organization based at Moffett Field. The group is establishing a space program to inspire students to pursue science, technology, engineering, and math. How do you provide through one activity and the investment in one activity a broad opportunity to get exposed to as many of the STEM areas as you possibly can, particularly in the areas of technology? Only with, with rocketry and space exploration can you really reach a much broader cross-section of all the STEM areas. And so that's kind of why we think it's, it's the key way to really teach STEM education. So you're going to have to add a propellant here. Through the mentorship of the Rocket Mavericks team, these students from the California Academy of Math and Science in Carson, California, designed and built a complex two-stage clustered rocket and its solid fuel propulsion system. There are three motors in the first stage, or booster, and another motor in the second stage, which will blast the rocket to full altitude. Success is contingent on all the systems working perfectly. There's a lot riding on this. What makes this program special and really kind of unique is that this program puts the pressure of a real mission with time and constraints on a team of kids to learn those skills to work together to accomplish something that they couldn't accomplish by themselves. Rocket Mavericks recently opened a new space center in Antioch, California, and is hoping to use rocketry to inspire scientific discovery in Bay Area high schools and beyond. Back in the desert, the students hope to accomplish more than just launching a rocket. Their mission is to deliver a sensitive scientific payload to about 100,000 feet. What we were trying to do is answer a fundamental question, which is how far off the surface of the Earth does life exist? We really don't know. 
you really can only look up to about 65, 70,000 feet in the atmosphere. The atmosphere goes to almost 320,000 feet. So for the vast majority of our atmosphere, it's unreachable and unaccessible. So we put this program together to do something we call bioprospecting, to try to determine off the planet's surface how far life exists. Is this like the real deal? Is it gonna happen at this time? The student's rocket hit speeds of Mach 2.8 and soared to over 100,000 feet to successfully complete its mission. That was awesome. It's not that they all become rocket scientists. That's really not what it's about. It's more about the complex systems, the systems engineering, using those skills, and working with people to accomplish greater things, I think, that really drives me for what the students do than necessarily being a, a rocket scientist, though, you know, a couple of them actually put something on the moon. Well, maybe I'll feel pretty good about that. Edwin Hubble once said, man explores the universe around him and calls the adventure science. These rocket explorers further their own understanding of the world and in doing so, take the human spirit onward and upward.